the premise is still the same. Our variables need to be on one side and our constants have to be on the other side. So number 19, to prep this one, we've got to move that 14x over. It's negative, so we need to add it to both sides so that our variables are on the left side and our constant remains on the right side. Now, I didn't leave that blank space yet because my a is not equal to 1, so I'm going to have to factor before I complete the square. So remember yesterday we talked about this. Uh, you take out that leading coefficient. Whether or not it divides evenly into the other term, you take it out regardless. Now this one does divide evenly. So we take out the 7. We're left with x squared plus 2x. I am going to leave the blank this time because I am going to complete the square. So over here to the side, I divide my new b, which is 2, by 2. That gives me 1. And when we square 1, we get 1. So that completes the square inside of our parentheses. Here's the other little difference. We're not going to add just 1 to the other side because... Really what's happening over here is that that 7 is being distributed. We're not distributing it, okay, but you got to think about it that way. So really, we need to add 7 to the other side. You have to multiply by that value that completes the square. You have to multiply that by the GCF before you add it to the opposite side. And that's what keeps it balanced. Okay, so let's continue with our process of solving. We need to factor. That would be x plus 1 squared. you got to bring down that 7. You can't drop the 7, and then 6 plus 7 is 13. Now, we didn't have to deal with this yesterday, but if you'll notice, we can't take the square root yet because of that 7 in front of our parentheses. So our next step is that we need to divide both sides by 7 because right now we're multiplying. So now x plus 1 squared is by itself. If that number divides evenly, great, do it. If it reduces, reduce it. But 13 over 7 in this case does not. So we're just going to leave it as 13 over 7. Then we're going to square root both sides, just like we did yesterday. x plus 1 is equal to the plus or minus. Now at this point, if either of those are perfect squares, go ahead and take their square roots. They aren't, so we're kind of stuck. And then we move the 1, so we subtract it. So we get x equals negative 1 plus or minus the square root of 13 over 7, and make sure that it is clear that that square root is around that entire fraction. Okay, no reason not to check it. Uh, and I really want to do this to point out a parentheses thing. Okay, negative 1 plus the square root of 13 over 7. That entire fraction needs to be inside of your parentheses. <clears throat> um, so here is our approximate answer. X is approximately 0.363. I'm just pointing that out because that's what you would get if you graphed it and found the zeros. I want to remind you of that other way of solving these. I stored it as my X, so now I'm going to check it by plugging it into both sides, and I get the same decimal value. That is not the answer, okay? That is just what I get when I plug my answer into both sides. They agree, so that is the answer. Since I wrote that one down, I'll go ahead and write down the other one. Um, as far as the decimal, oops, need a division there. The other approximate solution is negative 2.363. You'll notice a lot of these, um, when we do completing the square root of quadratic formula, the decimal part will be the same. It's just the number in front is different. Yes, ma'am. Okay, because we have that GCF in front of our perfect square polynomial, technically all those terms inside those parentheses are being multiplied by the GCF. 
two, and then we add it to the other side to keep it truly balanced, we have to multiply those two. Multiply. Okay? Any other questions before we do another one? Okay? Let's look at number 20. Okay, let's look at number 20. Uh, we need to combine some like terms first. We've got a couple of things to move. We have a 5x that's on the right side. We need that to be on the left side. We've already got an x over there, so we're going to combine those. And we don't want that 71. We want that constant on the other side. So we add it to both sides. So right now we have 5x squared. 10 minus 5 is 5. Not going to worry about the blank space yet. <coughs> Bless you, and that is equal to 71. Okay, when a is not 1, we've got to factor it out. So we get x squared plus x. And we complete the square. So our b, there's no constant there, or there's no coefficient there. Remember, if there's nothing there, it's understood to be a 1. So when we divide that by 2, that's 1 half. We've got to square it, so that gives us 1 fourth. So 1 fourth goes inside of our parentheses, and we have to add 5 fourths to the right side because we have to multiply 1 fourth by the GCF of 5. Okay, moving right along, let's factor. That would be x plus 1 half squared, because 1 half was the number that we squared. And let's add 71 and 5 fourths and get that in fractional form. 289 over 4. Now, because I have a fraction on the right side, I want y'all get, to get in the habit of looking at this. Instead of dividing by 5, let's multiply by 1 fifth. Okay, we're going to multiply by 1 fifth. It's the same thing because 1 fifth times 5 is 1. We did the same thing if we divide by 5. It just looking at it this way makes it easier to operate with that fraction. Okay, so our left side is now just the perfect square trinomial in factored form. Multiplying fractions, you just multiply across the top, multiply across the bottom, so that's 289 over 20. Uh, and I don't think, yeah, that doesn't simplify. So now we take the square root of both sides. So we have x plus 1 half is equal to plus or minus the square root of 289. And I know that the square root of 20 simplifies because it was just 4 times 5. The square root of 4 is 2. <coughs> Bless me. So we can write that as 2 square root of 5 because 20 is 4 times 5. Square root of 4 is 2. Okay, and uh, let's see here, let's subtract the one half. Now, um, I seriously doubt that that's how the answer key has the answer because we don't leave square roots in the denominator. But I'm not really going to worry about that right now. Um, 289, is that perfect square? I have a feeling that reduces. Oh, look at there, it's 17. Oops, should have simplified mm -hmm. that before. <clears throat> Always check and see if your numbers are perfect squares. So, um, as I mentioned before, we could kind of 
manipulate this and, and put it in a different form, but we're just going to leave it like that right now. We will talk about rationalizing denominators uh, later on when we do radical functions. Can I help you? How long have you been sending me? Okay, so like I said, we're just going to leave it in that form. Technically, that's not how the answer key is going to have it. Um, let's do look really quickly about how we need to type this into the calculator because we've got a bunch of stuff going on. You can just type in the negative one half. That's fine. The calculator will handle that. If you really want to, you can put parentheses around it, but technically you really don't have to. For 17 over, you have to put parentheses around this denominator. Okay, you have to put parentheses around this denominator or it will not turn out right. So open some parentheses, two square root of five. You gotta put two sets of parentheses here to close it because the first one closes the square root. The second one closes the denominator, okay? And then, so that's our approximate answer. Store that as x. Let's check it. 5x squared plus 10x minus 71. Let's see if that's equal to 5x. And we're good. Okay, and we're good. So just be very, very careful when you have multiple things in the denominator with the square root, that sort of thing. You've got to make sure you get your parentheses first. Yes, ma'am? From here to here? Okay. Are you confused about the one-fifth or how I got that answer? One half. Oh, this, this this was my side work. This was my side work for figuring out how to complete the square. I'm sorry. Okay, so we had the five in front of our perfect square trinomial. So in the previous problem, before we could take square root, we divided by that number. Well, because I have a fraction on the other side, it's easier to look at division as multiplication by the reciprocal. Okay, 5 times 1 fifth gives us 1, which is the same as if we had done 5 divided by 5. Okay, it was just because I was uh, I had a fraction on the other side. If there's not a fraction on the other side, it's fine to just divide by that number. Um, <clears throat> but when you do fractions, it's easier to do it that way. Okay? Alright, let's do one more. And then I want you all to practice with this a little bit. Number 21, we got a whole bunch of things on both sides. Typically with completing the square, I always want to move my variables to the left side. And in this case, that is good for us because if we add the 5x squared to both sides, that's going to give us a positive x squared. So that's going to make completing the square a little bit easier. So I'm also going to add the 5x. 17x and we'll move the 79 to the other side so that is negative 77. All right, so here we go. Completing the square. A is equal to 1, so yippee, we don't have to deal with that G, uh, GCF thing. Uh, so we're just going to divide negative 17 by 2. That does not divide evenly. So we leave it and we square it. Well, uh, I know that 17 squared is 289 because of our previous problem. And 2 squared is 4. <laughs> Bless you. So that's what we are going to add to both sides. So when we factor, it's x minus 17 over 2 squared is equal to, let's use our calculator, negative 77 plus 289 over 4. Make sure that's fraction, negative 19 over 4. So guess what's going to happen? We're going to have an imaginary solution. Because next step is to take the square root, Plus or minus, we have a negative under our square root, so go ahead and pull out the i. 
19 is not a perfect square, nor is it divisible by a perfect square, but 2 is, or excuse me, 4 is.